Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you're doing. Uh, welcome to another episode of Post Conference Presser for Anfield Index. Ladies and gentlemen, the Reds are fucking back. Sunday, Super Sunday, we will play them, Chelsea, and Anfield, a massive game. International football can just do one, can't it, realistically? But more importantly, we're happy. And we got on a slot back in his press conference. So welcome back, ladies and gents. You know who I am, Dave Davis, coming to you from? Fucking miserable, Edinburgh, truth be told. But we're not miserable because of the football and what's coming up. The Reds are back now. Maybe not all of them. And the reason I'm saying that is we'll talk about with this show, as we always do, the question slot was asked, the answers he gave, the injury news or potential injuries that he mentioned. We'll also talk about the threats that Chelsea possess. Any indications or possible things to take from the international break at all. And then as normal, I will give my predicted light up, score and scorers. Let's get into it, ladies and gents. So the first question Harness Hot was asked, it said a couple of weeks ago, that's been a few weeks about the contracts. So that actually video Connor opens with that, and it's in about Trent, Salah, Van Dyke, etc. And what did Arnest Lot say? He said, Well, I know what was happening with the national teams. Trent scored a fantastic free quick, so a free kick, sorry. So yeah, same question, same answer. It's always a good thing that you ask because it means they're doing really well. If you play badly, they wouldn't have asked. It's a good thing that everyone wants their contracts to be renewed but no news uh could have just said same answer and saved it there really couldn't it in all honesty there is no news it's, it's interesting the way you said it it's a good thing everyone wants their contract to be renewed it's quite clear that liverpool are in discussions and whilst the will the intent may be there you can take that as a positive they've still got three to get over the line haven't they and he's going to dominate and sort of Rage forward when he says, "Yeah, it, it's good that you ask." It might not be that way if we don't, or we get to January and, and it's still the same situation, is it? So, let's just see how this one develops at the moment. But there we go, ladies and gents. No real answers now. Injuries, and I'm always going to change it a bit because there was a bit at the end on Allison and a bit on injuries at the start. So I'm going to always put the two together, an injury sandwich for you if you want that. Uh, so. Zest about injuries, he said, yeah, Allison for sure. He's not with us in the upcoming weeks, which is a blow for us. Said many times as well, we've got, you know, we always want good players available for us. We have some issues with a number of players coming back from the national teams. And we could only judge that better today, as it's the first time they're in full training today. Maka missed one game, played the second one, Costas, for instance, missed that first game against England, and I can't name them all, but we've got a few issues on going. Alison was bad luck, and I was asked about, sorry, Alison, bad luck or something else, and I won't just jump into that straight away, actually. Let me separate it. Let's be fair to you. Yeah, didn't want to hear that, did we? So there's a little bit of, of people coming back who've got issues. Now, we thought that might mean McAllister. We knew the... Costas had missed the first game but was back. So he mentioned those two. So you're wondering, okay, is it those two? But then he said, I can't name them all. So now you're thinking, okay, Kelleher, are he playing the set? So you, you're just hoping on this one there's no nasty sort of sting in the tail because we watched those internationals the other, other night and thought, yeah, okay, they some played 90 minutes, some played 180 minutes, you know, over the two games. But no one seemed to be too bad. In fact, you can be honest and say, as an international break, well, Virgil didn't play, Salah didn't play the second one, Curtis Jones, the birth of his child, you know, so he had a bit of a breaks the wrong word naturally, but didn't play football. Yeah, we'll have to hope there is no sting in the tail coming up. And if, interestingly, if, if there is any training photos released, they will be glared at who is there and who's maybe not there, shall we say. So he was asked about Alisson later on, and this is why I'm jumping forward, you know, in that situation. He said, 
It's uncommon for goalkeepers, but for me, I had a keeper at Feyenoord who had muscles injury or muscle injuries, but not what you see a lot. We are looking into it. What we know is we had one, or you have a player that has one, there's chances of getting another one. That's the way it always goes and it can go up. Maybe it's a good moment to clarify as before. There was a rumour that I don't mind 12.30 kickoffs. What might, and he did actually say, you know, I said that we train at that time as well. What might be something for the English FA, if you play Wednesday evening in Champions League game, an early Saturday might be a disadvantage for injuries. So the time to play 12.30 is no problem at all. But if you play so shortly after Wednesday evening, it's maybe something we take into consideration. In retrospect, I may have chosen Queen instead of Allison, But like you said, don't expect a goalkeeper to pick up muscle injuries. What is very good in Holland is I'm 99.9% certain that teams that play Champions League don't then play on the Sunday. They get extra rest to the best to make sure that the best possibly they can be prepared for the Champions League. This isn't common in England. We don't take the Champions League into account. Quite a bit to unpick on this, really, isn't there? So first things first. We're never going to adopt that, adopt that Dutch approach because the TV rights and all that, that that's never going to change at all. The second bit, I do get his point because I know there was the whole thing about if you play, well, it's the away, isn't it, into a, a home for the Wednesday in the, the Champions League, then you wouldn't be the, the early kickoff. However, you do kind of just think like, Maybe it's just easier across the board. Anyone who plays the Wednesday, whether it be home or away in the Champions League, is then just not the early kickoff. It would just make sense realistically. Those, Even if they had to be later, those extra time and recovery time would be so valuable. Do I think the FA will change that and try and help Liverpool at all? Will they? Not a single chance to do that. And People will try and still engineer this. Just be ready. That will be clipped up, that bit of honest slot about slot complaints like clock use do about fixtures etc etc so just be ready for that another third point interesting yeah he's thinking about it isn't he maybe if i thought we might not have allison playing almost three games in a week or two so close together which isn't crazy goalkeeper i know you're thinking that but i kind of get that at the same time as well the, the more you can get allison on the pitch and quick Keller's an unbelievable and fantastic goalkeeper. I'm a massive fan of him. But if you can get Allison on that pitch as much as possible, why wouldn't you? So I do get that at the same time as well. So we'll have to see if almost later down the line when Allison comes back, does he ever make any adjustments? It will be interesting to see. Or if there is the three in the week, does Allison get rested? Supposed to have to wait till later in the season to find that one out. And he was then asked about fixtures and how that works, the things coming up. And he was quite honest about it, said, because he was asked about with the judges' team. If you judge your team only on a week, it would not be fair. We have to judge on this spell of games. They know better how we react and how we perform. And if we play tough Champions League games and tough league games, that's normal. And we know that. We've seen that ourselves two years ago when we played the Champions League. City and Arsenal are the only teams that have shown in the last two seasons they can do both. Don't think it's fair to judge us after a week or so, even if we do well. It's fair to judge us over this spell. Yeah, it's interesting because we kind of, rather than just a week, and it's a hell of a week coming up, isn't it? We'll go Chelsea, Leipzig away, Arsenal away. I mean, it's not just a week, is right. It's over this spell, this 10-game period, and the, almost a crazy run even further, right till the end of the year we're now looking at, isn't it? There's so many three a weeks and things to consider in this. So it will be interesting to see how we do. I think he's right. You look at it as a spell. I get what he's saying as well about, and it's not to praise the others. We're, you know, we're not trying to do that, but City and Arsenal are the only ones who've gone to later stages and keep it all going. You look at Newcastle, for instance, last season, didn't you? They did, you know, trying to do all that. People may say, oh, they got injuries, but they just didn't have the squad. They couldn't keep it going. And one sort of gave way, didn't it? It's, it is difficult. It will be a real test of this squad coming up in the near future, which, again, will make you think about, will there be more rotation? How will he, how will he start to do it? Because there's not really been too much, and we have had a few three a, three a week, you know, 
And even thinking back to just before the, the Bologna one, there was a few changes, but not too many. So, yeah, it is hard to predict what it'll do. But again, if you're not going to make too many changes, it's hard to then talk about fixtures, freshness, and those types of things. So it is an interesting spell coming up for Arneslot and Liverpool. There was a couple of things about Chelsea, but I won't talk too much about that more. We'll talk about it later. He was then asked about the defensive form, and I like this question, you know, to keep that going and how you'll do that. He said, it's very important. If you want to achieve something in a season, you need to have that defensive stability. We've seen that till now, and again, the fixture list has been kind to us. We have to take that into account. Now we face even better players, and Chelsea, for instance, like United, have a lot of great individuals, which we have to manage and control. We also must not forget to create our own chances as well. We have players that can score goals, so we're looking forward to an interesting game on Sunday. Yeah, it does feel, especially during this period. I mean, the XG against has, has been brilliant, hasn't it? That, you know, Canate and Van Dijk have been sensational this season. But overall, there has been times where you can say the team looks like it can be got at. But look at the XG against. Look at the fact we've only conceded two goals in the league. Now, please, as I'm saying this, this doesn't mean I'm saying for the next seven Premier League games, I expect us to only concede two goals. That You know, the level of opponent does ratchet up a little bit now, isn't it? You know, you've got a Chelsea, Arsenal away. We know that who's coming a bit down the line. But you do feel if we can maintain that semblance of defensive stability, it could be huge for us. It really could in that regard. And a large part of it will be, you feel, keeping... Canate and Van Dijk free at the back because it, and it's not being derogatory at all of Kwanzaa or Gomez but if Liverpool for me are going to be successful Canate and Van Dijk have got to stay on the pitch as much as possible in the big games and, and that's it sounds harsh but I'm already, you know you're already thinking the same that Brighton one in the Carabao Kwanzaa Gomez, stick them on the team sheet right now. Give the other two the night off. It will be, you feel, defined by how many, and especially those two, of the first team, the first 11, we can keep fit. But who knows? There are big challenges coming up, and let's hope they do well against Chelsea. Other couple of things that that we'll call out around Connor Bradley, which was nice to hear him praise. And just a a little bit of a... I'm not going to give the full answer he, he gave on that, but a little bit of an answer. He said... It's been a bright future of very good players is what we need here at Liverpool. Last season, he did really well where he had to replace Tad. Trent, Trent's played a lot, but he's a very good player. Although there's competition, or real competition from Trent, good players find their way into the team. And that's why I expect from him in the future at this club. It's an interesting one, that. And it, it people obviously jump on it because of Trent's contract situation at Bradley. But yeah, this is an interesting one that we might never see this for a while, don't get me wrong, but people are now starting to think, did he mean that he could countenance a team with Trent in it and Bradley? What would that look like? How would that work, etc.? But just interesting that he mentioned those. And the final one I want to give you, ladies and gents, the, the answer around was VVD. She said, his leadership, and I like this question, I like talking about VVD, because just to be clear, he's been the best player for us this season. For me, the best player in the Premier League right now. And it's interesting, a lot of people are saying, and I get this, Cole Palmer, people reference Harlan Scott. For me, this season, I genuinely believe Van Dijk has been the best player. He's been sensational, not just on a defensive, not just on a leadership, but even his passing ability. You've seen how much he creates, how much he starts. It it almost feels like... and. Uh, and it's maybe a strong statement, it's too far in a way, but you see the essence of, we've almost got the old Virgil back a little bit, the 18 to 20, you're, you're seeing the embers of that minimum, maybe never going to hit that level, obviously there's bigger tests to come and all that, and that's not really the point, isn't it? It's the quality they started the season with, it's been absolutely breathtaking, it really has, and yeah, just fingers crossed, we get him fit and get that contract signed with him as well. So anyway, what was he? What did Honest Lot answer about? He said he's been crucial for us. He said, from what you guys see on the pitch, they're all the same about how good he is and in defence and what he contributes to our offensive side of play. You've seen that. What I see that you don't see 
He's also important on the training ground. He's always the one that's the most loud. He always brings energy and the quality as well. What you see during the weekends is what I see during the week. He's definitely our leader. And he is. There's no doubts about that. So let's get a contract on paper as good signed as quickly as we can, eh? And then he dealt a little bit with the, you know, because he gets criticism in Holland. He said, if you're not coming from Holland, it might be a bit of a surprise. If you are, then it's all about criticism in the Dutch media. That's what it's all about. And then he did laugh a little bit because, you know, he said, uh, being a bit too harsh on that. If there's a chance to criticize a person, then Dutch people will find a way of criticizing you. I don't think he deserves to be, as he's played some very good games for the national team. It's not a surprise for me. It's a surprise he gets criticism. Yes, he's in general, as if you're on this schedule and the fixture list, there's bound to be times where, or it's normal, as he said, that you might just have a few days off. I'm assuming he means some sort of, you know, dip there naturally as well. Some other players in the Dutch squad didn't even come in as they were tired. So how can you criticise someone that's played every game in the Euros and then every game here for Liverpool? That's the Dutch media. It is interesting, isn't it? Because people lambast Virgil van Dijk in the Dutch media, whereas we know he's an absolute demigod on that pitch. You know, he's been the player of the year, as we said, for Liverpool. Probably for me, the player, Premier League player of the seasons are mentioned as well. But the Dutch media seems to be, especially in big names like you've seen them, Hulle van Basten, van der Vaart, even big criticism of Virgil van Dijk. Can you imagine if England had a centre-half like Virgil van Dijk, he said a slab at? He would be, like he should be, absolutely glorified. It would be all built around him. He is an absolute game-changer of a player. I will never understand, as on a slot's alluding to, why the Dutch media come for Virgil van Dijk. But it's what it is a little bit there. So those are the Q&As. So then actually we say the last game, you know, what are the, the lessons we can take from that? Anyone play their way in and out? Now, obviously, you've got that little worry about the injuries, Arna Slot said, so we've got that to factor in. But international break, I mean, what lessons can you learn? Trent is not a left-back. We didn't need to be told that. Apparently, Carsley or Mike do. Like, I, I still don't get that. But he scores a brilliant free kick anyway. You can play anywhere on the pitch. Other things we learned. Now... It seemed okay, so we were waiting for news on this, and you're hoping there isn't a sting in the tail, but you think it's a Bosley, Gapo, Grabenberg, Canate, Robbo, they all played pretty much 180 minutes, the two games for their countries, and you're kind of fingers crossed for that. You're hoping one of those hasn't picked up something, because they're all important at the same time. You wonder about Diaz, who played, I wouldn't say limited, but was taken off, for Colombia, he scored. Yeah, that was great. You wonder about Maka, because Maka didn't play the first game, but he did play the second one. It was called out by Arna Slot at the same time. So you're just thinking, like, please, 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 don't be anything too sort of serious on Maka. Again, all these important players. It has say it had seemed positive at first with VVD, Salah, Curtis either missing a game or not playing a minute, so for different reasons. But really are a little bit unsure you're hoping there's nothing too bad and this sounds terrible as i'm saying it endo was mentioned as well so you do wonder if it, if it's an endo injury that in the context of the entire squad he's you know he's not going to slot starters you, you can't say that so he's played minimal minutes for liverpool so you wonder if it's that you're probably hoping that a, a little bit more we don't know if kies is back he wasn't asked that as well so yeah, there's a little bit of uncertainty maybe about what you're hoping. It could just be Knox and then we see them all in training and it's all diluted. There's nothing there to worry about. But until we know that for definite, there's maybe a few question marks about who is available for Chelsea. But we'll have to see. And they do bring a threat, ladies and gents. Let's just be clear on that. I mean, they're fourth in the league. They got some good wins and then we'll talk about their away form, which is very, very good in fact. They might be a better away team than a home team. And whilst I think I think Virgil van Dijk, sorry, is the best player right now with the Premier League, a lot of journalists and different people are picking Cole Palmer. And I get that if you look at his run from the end of this season into this campaign as well. He is their danger man. He is the one we're going to have to watch. But, I mean, he's, he's not the only one. And if you look at that team that for their seven games, they won four, 
drawn two, and lost one. Now, the loss is against City, and, and you know, that, that thing's the opening day. That can happen. That's fine. Bereska's sort of getting used to stuff. The draws have interestingly been Palace. It was Forest last time out. A uh, ho, wasn't this? That they carry, you know, thinking, oh, that's all right. Maybe they're, they're not quite going into it as they won. And Forrest had 10 men for a period of that game as well, after James Ward Powell's crazy sort of handball thing. However, it's still, if you look at the four wins, they're away form, ladies and gents. They won away at Wolves. I mean, they scored six in that one, didn't they? West Ham, they demolished. That was a hopeless half 12 by West Ham. Bournemouth, they got a, a late one. There is the, the question are maybe they are a better away team. And actually, they may be quite happy that we're going to come on to them. I mean, Palmer's got 11 goal contributions, six goals, five assists. And it's a bit of stat paddy because they're playing in, you know, Europa thing, aren't they? So Cuckoo's got seven and he got a few in those. Jackson it gets lambasted a lot, but four goals, three assists. So they will carry a threat. Just to be clear, this is not an easy game by any means. And maybe the so thankful it is a super Sunday, that extra day's rest is going to come in so so valuable for Liverpool. There's no two ways about it. But you look at other things, you think in suspensions for Farners out, Kukurea, I don't mind that too much. It'd be interesting to see who they slot in there. And then the other thing to say is Chelsea, the style they play. We talk about our risks at the back. Their CB were more pronounced. I don't know if it's because of the, the lesser players in, in their back line. Don't get me wrong. But you can see, or you expect there to be a real focus on the press and doing that because Chelsea do. You saw that that game the other day. I can't remember who it was, but Sanchez absolutely kamikaze, wasn't he? Think of that, that European game. So, yeah, we'll see. But they will be a real threat to us this weekend. And when it comes to lineup and scorers for this one, hoping, obviously, there is no sting in the tail. But for me, I think it'll be Kelleher, Trent. Robbo, those are your fullback. VVD and Canate, that, that back five is dead easy to pick if they're available. Simple as that. The midfield, again, Gravenberg and Zabozlai. McAllister for me, and again, bracing for injury news, is the unknown, isn't he? And maybe Curtis, who I can't say is resting, has had a new pawn baby. Congratulations to him and his partner. But, his legs will be fresher, if that makes sense. I just wonder, but I, I still have a suspicion it will be the normal three, Grab, McAllister, it's a boss lag. And then the forward line, I think, will be Sal and Natri up for obvious reasons on the right. Jota in the middle for obvious reasons as well. Doesn't clearly fancy Nunes, does he? The left one is the hardest to pick because earlier in the season, you know, Gakpo came in for the Champions League, the one in the San Siro, but then he played the last game, didn't he? against Palace, whereas Diaz started against Bologna on the, the week the night before. So it, it really could be either or. I just get a feeling because he's maybe scored and that freshness. Diaz always has usually a good game against Chelsea as well as the like finals. I would think it's going to be Diaz, Jota, Salah. So that is my starting lineup. Would not be surprised to say if Jones was in there instead of McAllister, one of the others, or if, and no, no one's going to be surprised. If it, you should say that. No one's going to be surprised now if it's Gakpo or Diaz. It is our strongest reinforcement area in the entire team. You, you know, you can make a case for either or what you like. I'm, I'm more of a Diaz fan, but Gakpo was really shining. He was really good against Crystal Palace. It's important to say. So it will be focused on how well they come back. How well is, is Diaz bearing maybe? Did play altitude, didn't he, against Bolivia's had a second game as well. He came off on about 70 minutes for that one. Yeah, I'd, I think it will be Diaz, and he's got, like I say, that good history, but we would not be surprised. And I would be disappointed, just to be clear, if it's Gapo, It gives you an option on the bench. The only thing that's a bit unknown from the press conference is no one really asked about it. Chiesa, is, is he available or what the status is for him? Because I know Slot was talking about a few and said, I'm not going to go through them all. We're probably like you, just going to have to watch the training, photos, videos, whatever we get served up. Which brings us to score and scorers. Don't think this one is going to be remotely easy. I'm really stressing that. I think it is going to be a difficult one. But my prediction for this one is a 2-1. I suspect Salah to get on the, the score sheet. Chelsea 
do take chances at the back. I'm hoping that that comes, you know, fortuitously for us. You know, a, a nice tap in with Sanchez and Barris wouldn't be sad at all. But they do carry a threat. And actually, as I say, when you look at Chelsea, they almost seem a better away team potentially in that regard. But we will have to see. But 2 1, sell to score. Let's not lie. You would take it all day with no injuries. This big week of games coming up. There's some tough ones in there. This is Chelsea into Leipzig, into Arsenal away. So any type of, you know, win with no injuries, we will take. 2-1 Salah, that is what I'm going for, ladies and gents. But Friday the 18th of October, the Premier League is back. The Reds are back. Super Sunday. Chelsea at home, half past four. I'll be there. I know you can't wait for it. And that, ladies and gents, was another post-conference presser. Anfield Index.